Hey everyone, my name is Jeff Kinney and I'm the author of the Diary of Wimpy Kid series and the Rally Jefferson series. And I am here today in the Wimpy Kid studio where I have been cooped up for about, how long has it been? A year. That's right, we have been working here for about a year and we really like to get out into the world. Now, a few years ago, I used to go all around the world. I've been to 39 of the countries where Wimpy Kid is published. In fact, let's take a quick look at some of the places that we've been. we can't travel around like we used to, we still can do some things safely. So I have a new book coming out. It's called Rally Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Spooky Stories. And we have plotted out a tour that's really innovative and really safe. It's a drive-through spooky experience and we're going across five US states, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, and Arizona. We're gonna get in a van. We've all gotten tested. We've all come out negative for COVID. And we've got all of these test kits that we're gonna keep testing ourselves along the way because safety is the number one priority. So we are going on an adventure. We hope you'll come along for the ride with us and we hope we have a blast. Okay, our bags are packed. We're about to take off. But before we get going, I want to answer a few questions. I'm Tiana. I am from West Virginia. Mr. Kenny, which one of Rally's spooky stories is your favorite and why? Say hi to Rally. My favorite spooky story is the science project where Greg is Victor Frankenstein and Rally is Frankenstein's monster. I just think it's really funny and I wrote it at the last minute. Hi, Mr. Kenny. I'm Josh at BES and I'm super excited to read your brand new book. How do you make a book scary and funny? That's been the trick with these books. I've tried to write books that are scary and funny from Rowley's perspective. So once I get inside of his head, it's pretty easy to do both. Hi, I'm Taylor from Wyoming, and I need to know if your book will give me nightmares. Can you rate it from one to 10? One being the lowest, 10 being the highest? Thank you, bye. Let's see, I would say Rowley's book is about a five on the scariness scale. So no, it won't give you nightmares. Hi, I am McKayden and I am from West Virginia. What do you create first when writing a new book? The story or the illustrations? Safe travels, Mr. Kenny. I actually create the jokes in my mind first. And when I have the jokes, I have an illustration in my mind. And then that's the last thing I put down on paper. Hi, Mr. Kenny. Can you answer this question for me? What is the spookiest thing that's ever happened to you? Good luck with your trip. The spookiest thing that's ever happened to me is I had a ghostly encounter when I was in an old hotel in Newburyport, Massachusetts. Hi, Jeff Kenny. My name is Michaela Wong. What was the most weirdest and most embarrassing thing you have ever done in public? And explain why. The weirdest thing I've done in public, I haven't quite done it yet. I'm going to dress up in a costume on this trip, and I'm not going to tell you what, what I'm going to dress up as yet. <laughs> okay, so we've had our first big surprise on the tour already. There was an historic snowstorm in Denver over the weekend, about a foot of snow, the biggest storm in 15 years. But we touched down, I'm here with the skeleton crew, including our next big surprise, my son Will, a high school senior, is on the trip with us. He's gonna be doing remote schooling while we roll down the road in our home for the next two weeks. Our van, so are you guys ready to go? Start this trip. Yeah. Right. What's up, skeletons? <laughs> Here we are at the site of our first event. This is our last walkthrough to make sure everything looks just right. Of course, we're hoping this looks a lot spookier at night. Now we're entering the back gate. Okay, 
we're here in front of the zombie lab. So the idea is that the zombies rip through the fence right here. Now that image in the background, I think is really scary. It's like a mansion and there are zombie silhouettes in the window. So when I was a kid, I was terrified of just about everything. The thing I was most scared of is that when I was in the bathroom, I always thought there would be somebody hiding behind the shower curtain. So I could never use the bathroom unless I peeled back the curtain and made sure there was no zombies in there first. So question for you, Vanessa, what were you scared of as a kid? Macaroni cheese. <laughs> macaroni, you were actually scared of macaroni Terrified. cheese? Okay. She's from London, I don't know. They do things weird over there. How about you, Shailen? I was afraid of somebody hiding under my bed and grabbing my feet. <laughs> And it happened once, didn't it? It did. Right. My sister. <laughs> Your sister. So I actually have a few author friends and I have asked them what they were most scared of as kids. So while we're waiting for this to get set up, let's go to the tape. Hello, my name is Raul III. When I was a kid, my dad would tell me stories about La Llorona. So whenever I would take out the trash, I swear, that I could hear her screams, and they sounded like this. Donde están mis niños? Donde están mis niños? So I would run back to the house and slow down right as I got to the door. Jeff, it's Kelly Yang, and when I was growing up, I was really scared of cheese. <laughs> so I didn't like cheese. I did not really like eating it. Everybody else loved cheese, so I was really scared whenever people would bring out like a cheese plate or something. I didn't want to seem weird for not liking it. Also, I couldn't pronounce all the different types of cheese and there's like so many. I didn't know which one was which. And somebody told me that cheese comes from like rotting milk or something and I was petrified. So yeah, could not be close to cheese. <laughs> Hey, this is Jerry Kraft, author and illustrator of the graphic novels, New Kid and Class Act. So, what really scared me when I was a kid, I know this is gonna sound weird because I've got a reader out sweatshirt and I'm in front of all these books, but what really scared me were books. Whew. When I tell you the first time I had to read a 300 page book for class, I got a cold sweat, I got goosebumps, my head, Oh my goodness, I would have rather fight the most fierce werewolf or run from a pack of zombies than thinking that I could ever read a 300 page book. But as I got older, they got less and less scary and now I actually enjoy them. Who would have known? Okay, the sun's going down. Our first event's just about to start, but the last step is for me to get into costume. <laughs> I have a gravedigger costume here because I'm handing out books in the graveyard. I am not a costume guy, so we're going to have to see how this goes. I think I'm going to be a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> okay, so this is how you do a book handoff during a pandemic. I've got an extra long shovel. We're going to put a book at the end of the shovel. Here we go, the handoff. And then we're going to wait for a car to come through. This way, I can hand the book over without getting too close to a kid, which keeps the kid safe and me safe. This is what we gotta do to stay safe. Right now we are at the foot of the beautiful Rocky Mountains in Colorado. We have a little bit of time before the event, so I understand some Scholastic readers have sent me some questions, so we're gonna take a few minutes to answer them. Hi, Mr. Kenny, I'm Denisha from Alabama, and I don't know what kind of skills you have, but have you ever changed the oil in your car? Have a safe trip. Great question. I am a cartoonist. I'm not a very handy guy. So if my car needed an oil change, I would take it to a professional. In fact, on this trip, we ran out of wind windshield wiper fluid and we needed a little bit of help with that. I'm Ansel Patel and I live in Milford, Ohio. I have a question for you. What is the craziest or spookiest tourist attraction that you've ever encountered on a road trip? The craziest or spookiest tourist attraction you know, I actually went to a town that was haunted and there were ghost stories everywhere. So we did a bit of a haunted story tour 
And one of the kids I was traveling with was actually Zach Gordon from the first Wimpy Kid movie. And he ran into a real person who was standing still in the shadows and looked like a statue. And he totally freaked out. He said, I thought you were a ghost. So that's my memory of that. I'm Martha Ann from Alabama. And my question is, how old were you when you went on your first big road trip and where did you go? I remember going on really big road trips when I was pretty young. We'd all pile into a station wagon, which was like a smaller, lower version of an SUV. And I had three siblings, so it was hot. We didn't have air conditioning in our car. Sometimes we bring an animal with us. So some of the inspiration from the long haul where the pig gets out of the car came from a real life experience where a rabbit got out of ours. What's up, Mr. Kenny? I'm Leo from New Jersey. And my question for you is, have you ever been so afraid that you tooted when you were afraid? <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna answer that question. You know, I, if, if I remembered, I don't think I would tell. So I think I'll keep that one to myself, but great question. We are leaving Colorado behind and entering into Wyoming. Woo! All right, this is the first time for all of us and we're really lucky to be here because two days ago this highway was closed because of too much snow. So who back there is ready to see some bison? Yeah! I'm here tonight in the zombie thicket. As you can see, it's very scary. We've got the sounds going, the fog's rolling up. I'm in the mood for a scary story. So I understand somebody's recorded one. Let's hear it. It was an old, old mansion. There were reports. A lady disappeared. In the old mansion, in the big library, there was a heavy container filled with matches. Now, on one ordinary day, there was a husband and a wife living in the house. The woman hears a crash coming from all the stairs. She goes upstairs to investigate. She finds a dark scratch on the ground. She goes over to find out what happened. She realizes the container that was placed on the shelf had disappeared. She followed the scratch to where it had led which led under the couch, which is where she found the heavy metal container. Matches were scattered all around under the couch. It is hard for that box to just easily move. A gust of wind could not knock it over. Do you believe in ghosts? Because I do. It's Saturday morning, we're in Casper, Wyoming, and what do you have in your hand there? I have got four at-home COVID test kits that the team has taken, and we're just waiting on Jeff and Will to finish up their tests. Okay, so here are Jeff and Will, Okay. and they're about to swab for their latest COVID test. Just three times around? Three times around at least, in both of your nostrils, please, Jeff Kinney. Ready? Bet, Very attractive. Bet you never thought you were going to see an international best-selling <laughs> author do that. Hey, how are you doing, Vanessa? <laughs> Good. What are you up to? Well, my grave digger head is actually a little too small. So it is. I have found one, an extra large, I think, fits just right. And I found this shirt right here. That's great. Show the back. Yeah. All right, we got to oh, get that. Skeleton. <laughs> you remember the tour forever? Yeah. yeah. See anything you like, Skeleton Vanessa? Oh, the vet. Yeah, this is a problem. I like everything. <laughs> okay. Vanessa, we have run into a problem here in Wyoming. It's raining snow. Right. It's so cold. So how are we going to do our event tonight? We're taking it inside. Inside. And where are we right now? We're in a car dealership. OK. It's amazing. So when we run into problems, what do we do? We we adapt. You can come here, get a new car, or you can get a book by Jeff Kinney. There he is. Can you see him down there? So we decided to come to a really nice place to eat tonight, but we're a bit underdressed. <laughs> okay, 
we are entering into Utah. We had our next big surprise. Looks like we're gonna have to pull over, find a place to stay for the night. We're about to get some weather, man. Greg, what's going on? Well, we got a little bit of a snow blizzard shower coming through, so we're holding down the back gate. Look at these guys. Come true. All right. Oof, the event finally ended. And now? And now it's sunny. <laughs> right at the end. And then what happened, Shayla? It was crazy snow and so windy to the fact that our bat cave blew down. The bat cave is no more, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can figure out something to replace it. We are here at beautiful Zion National Park, and we don't want to ever leave, but we're going to have to get to our next event soon. However, we have a few minutes to answer some questions from kids. Hi, my name is Adriana. Have you ever ate dog food or dog treats? <laughs> I think I actually did have some sort of bacon wrap sort of thing once. And then somebody told me that the standards were different between human food and dog food. So I think I spit it out. Hello, Jeff Kitty. My name is William P. And I have a question for you. Did you have bad grades like Greg Hefley while you were in uh, elementary school? Or did you have good grades? I had good grades when I was younger and then they got progressively worse as I went through college, unfortunately. But luckily, I graduated on time. Hi, my name is Alize. Have you ever went skydiving and landed in a crazy spot? I've never gone skydiving and landed in a crazy spot. However, I have gone hot air ballooning and landed in somebody's backyard. Hi, my name's Kelvin and I was wondering if you moved into a haunted house, what would be the first thing you would do? If I moved into a haunted house, the very first thing I would do is leave. We are now leaving Utah and entering into Nevada. One of the most fun things about our events is that some people have been dressing up their cars and you can see this person has dressed up their vans in the chapter titles of the book. Come on over here. Some people even decorate their cars. They do these designs that says awesome, friendly, spooky stories here with a really excellent Greg zombie. So I'm going to show you some highlights from some of the other people who have dressed up their cars. I'm moving on. Entering now into Arizona. Woo That's a pretty good bear. Look at I can't believe we saw a bear in the wild on our trip. We are here today at the beautiful Grand Canyon National Park in Arizona. We're at the South Rim right now. This is a place I've always wanted to come to, and I'm very lucky that we're able to come here during COVID. I'm really curious to know that when the world opens up, where do you want to go first? Hi, my name is Mia, and when it's safe to travel, I want to go to Vegas to see my best friend. Hello, Jeff Kinney. When the world opens up for me, I want to go to California. And I want to go to California because I want to see my cousins and my grandma, and I also want to play some better video games. My name is Fallon, and when it's safe to travel again, I want to go to Hawaii. Be and I want to swim with dolphins. Hi, Mr. Kinney. I am Allison from Monticello, New York. When the world opens up again, the first place I want to go is to San Francisco and watch the sunrise and visit the Golden Gate Bridge. Bye, I hope you're having an amazing tour. Hi, Mr. Kinney. I'm James from New York. And when the world opens up again, I want to go to Yonkers and finally give my grandparents a big old hug. My name is Monetti. 
And when it's safe to travel again, I want to travel to California because I have family members down there and I miss them. It's the last night of the tour. We're going to take you on the final walkthrough. Here we go. Rowley and Greg are going down Snake Road. It's a little scary. Rowley doesn't want to do it. Come on this way. Rowley wants to turn back. Greg says we got to keep going. There's spider whips ahead. Let's go. We can hear all the spiders. There's giant spiders all around. Greg wants to cut through the bat cave. Let's go. We're in the bat cave. There's bats flying on the wall. You can hear bats flying all around. We're gonna go through. Oh my gosh. It looks like some zombies have broken out of the secret zombie lab. They're everywhere. We've got disgusting zombie sounds. What happened to Greg? He's lost. Come this way. Oh no. Greg's been turned into a zombie. There's one last thing to do. Come on. Thank you guys for coming. This has been a blast. Here's your book. I hope you like it. Stay safe. We'll see you down the road. What do we have to see now?